What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another live fantasy football mock draft for you back on ESPN with a 10-team full PPR mock where we will be selecting from the second overall position. Should be pretty interesting. And while we wait for this thing to kick off, a quick reminder, if you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear in the comment section your thoughts along with any other questions you guys might have. We will do our best to answer them all. And lastly, make sure to check out the 2022 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide available for purchase, uh, everything you can want at a great value, top 150 overall player rankings and standard PPR formats, individual player bios, tiers, projections, along with general fantasy advice, details in the description. But with that being said, let's get into it. The first pick has been made, Jonathan Taylor. And I've said this a bunch of times, the second pick is one of the easiest picks to decide what to do on. Uh, whoever's left from the duo of Taylor and McCaffrey, you just go with that pick. Jonathan Taylor was selected first overall. I'm going Christian McCaffrey second overall. It's as simple as that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that might catch flack out there that say, you know, McCaffrey should be the 101. If you're looking at pure upside, I don't know how you can't argue that. Sure, there's a risk factor involved. So if you don't want to draft McCaffrey first overall, I completely understand it uh, because of the injury history. But, you know, it just comes down to a point of if you draft a little bit of a riskier option, do you know how to build your roster around that? And if you do, if you feel confident in it, then I don't want to dissuade you from missing out on the upside of a McCaffrey, which is what I'm going to do, uh, which is what, what I refuse to do here. So McCaffrey, I go with him at the second pick. Then you see Derrick Henry. I don't know how you can have Derrick Henry ahead of Austin Eckler in full PPR. That doesn't make too much sense to me. Um, Eckler goes to the 104 followed by Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. So three straight wide receivers. And I do want to point out something here. Uh, the pick hasn't been made, but Alvin Kamara back to ranked within the top 10. I've been screaming about this for the last, I feel like, two weeks, three weeks. The suspension ain't happening this year, folks. Kamara belongs back in the discussion of a top five pick. In fact, I'd have him a, ahead of a Derrick Henry. I'd have him ahead of a Najee, ahead of a Dalvin Cook. Uh, you know, so uh, yeah, you, whoever gets Kamara... Uh, at any point in time now is getting an absolute steal. Whoever got him beforehand and took a chance on him, like in the late second, early third, tremendous, tremendous value. Kudos to you. So after our selection of Christian McCaffrey, again, just to recap, you, recap it, you see Derek Henry, Austin Eckler, Cup, Jefferson, Chase, uh, three wide receivers, then Najee, Dalvin Cook, DeAndre Swift, the last pick in the first round, followed by Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, uh, okay, no issues there. So the top five wide receivers now off the board. Then Debo, then Alvin Kamara, tremendous value on Kamara, like I said before. Leonard Fournette, James Conner, CeeDee Lamb. Pretty crazy that Joe Mixon is still available. That's wild. He just got selected. So right now, honestly, what I'm looking at is I might go Travis Kelsey here and then go with probably like a Saquon or an Aaron Jones, whoever's left. So let's do that. Um, so many times I've gone like Aaron Jones and Saquon. This is a 10, 10 team league. Um, you know, it's a situation where um, I think that getting the positional advantage, very, very important. So uh, Saquon ended up going with the pick after we selected Travis Kelsey. That's fine. Uh, I have a backup in Aaron Jones, who I feel very good about in full PPR scoring. So uh, we're going to get Aaron Jones here and then continue on with our draft. So I like the way this thing is shaping up. We've got McCaffrey. We've got Aaron Jones. And sure, you know, maybe you're a little bit worried about McCaffrey. We are going to add depth at the running back position. Do not be worried about that. Um, so other than that, you know, nothing too crazy here. Um, Keenan Allen goes with the 303, you know. Saquon Barkley is somebody that I, I, I would have really liked uh, in the third round. I, I think, you know, more I look at it, I think he's a little bit more better, better, better well-rounded than Aaron Jones. So uh, it is what it is, though. Uh, I really like both those talents. I'm not going to, uh, you know, uh, get too upset about that. I think we still have a very good trio considering our first three selections. Uh, so, yeah, you see after Aaron Jones pick Keenan Allen, good value there. Mark Andrews, and then Cortland Sutton. Wow. I feel like that's one of the earliest points I've seen Cortland Sutton go. Um, I think it's going to be a similar situation with, you know, uh, Russell Wilson, what we had in Seattle, DK and uh, Tyler Lockett. But there's other guys I'd rather take, you know, uh, Tyreek Hill, uh, Michael Pittman, 
maybe even DJ Moore. Definitely other, you know, running backs. I mean, look, Nick Chubb is still on the board. You've got Ezekiel Elliott, I believe, still on the board. So, in, in fact, how low is Ezekiel Elliott ranked here? The fact that I have a chance to get, he is ranked 42nd overall. Holy cow, that is insane that Zeke is ranked that low. That makes zero sense to me. Um, but hey, wow, okay. T. Higgins goes at 309, followed by Cam Akers. Cam Akers, no world where he should be drafted ahead of Nick Chubb, ahead of Zeke, ahead of Travis Etienne. Awful, awful uh, rating there. Michael Pittman at the 401, Chubb at the 402, good value. A.J. Brown at the 403, followed by Terry McLaurin, followed by Kyle Pitts. Um, so right now what I'm looking at, we could go wide receiver. We could go running back. If Zeke isn't there, because I imagine that's what the case is going to be, let's look at wide receivers that we can go with. So wide receivers that we can go with, you know, Jalen Waddle. Let's see uh, his, um, you know, questionable um, no major news there. Um, Travis Etienne just went, Ooh, I was considering Travis Etienne in the fifth round, potentially if Zeke didn't make it to us. So now if, if, if we don't get another running back, I'm going to be a little bit upset, uh, a little bit less than ideal, but let's see, let's see what happens here with our, yeah, I mean, wow. Okay. So right on cue, Travis Etienne and Zeke both selected before we can, you know, pull the trigger on them. So what do we have at running back left? Montgomery, as our third running back, Brees Hall is there. Um, I, I might, I might just end up waiting right now and just hit the wide receiver position. I like Mike Williams. I like Jalen Waddle. I think I'll probably go with, I'll probably go with Jalen Waddle first, and then I'll go with like a Marquise Brown and hope that Allen Robinson can fall to us. That's kind of what I'm you know, that's what I'm going for. Mike Williams is still also there. That's, that's pretty tempting. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I'll go with Marquise Brown. Yeah, I'll go with Marquise Brown here. Actually, if we go, maybe we can invest the pick in DeAndre Hopkins later. Let's go with Mike Williams first and then just kind of play it out. See when some of these other wide receivers go. So, a little bit of a tough break for us in the fourth round. Both our targets in Zeke and Travis Etienne don't make it back to us. But, I mean, to be fair, no way in hell Zeke should have been ranked that low. So I almost throw that one out. Uh, and then Etienne going in the fourth round, that's pretty typical. So we probably were a little bit, uh, you know, too optimistic to begin with. But we're doing all right. You know, I, I think we've got two very good running backs in McCaffrey and Aaron Jones. We've got a Travis Kelsey. So, you know, essentially what could have happened here, if we hadn't selected Travis Kelsey, we could have gone a Saquon Barkley and then like an Aaron Jones um, so that we could have had our running back position taken care of, have that trio. Um, and here, let's see, uh, are the top tight ends uh, after Kyle Pitts still available? I believe Waller and Kittle are still there. They are. So we could have potentially gone with a, you know, tight end in the fifth round or in the sixth round, depending on what happens. Uh, after a Mike Williams selection, you see Cordero Patterson, Josh Allen. Wow. All the way the, until the fifth round. It's, it's looking like a draft that I would do, um, you know, kind of devaluing the quarterback position. Cordero Patterson, I don't like that pick at all. Um, I think I'm just avoiding him in drafts this year. Josh Jacobs, I think it's going to be a running back by committee. With the Raiders, I'm avoiding him. Monty, all things considered, probably pretty good value there in the fifth round. Honestly, I was considering him um, when I was selecting. Then you see Chris Godwin, uh, Chris Godwin, Brees Hall. Even though I'm not a Brees Hall believer, him at the end of the fifth round, I do think is good value. So, um, you know, I, I can't deny that. Uh, then you see Marquise Brown. He finally goes off the board. J.K. Dobbins, Patrick Mahomes. Are we going to see a little bit of a quarterback run here? I think, I think some people might be a little bit tempted uh, for that to happen. So let's keep an eye out on that. Uh, also, the two tight ends and Darren Waller and George Kittle are still available. Actually, Slash were still available. Darren Waller just got selected. We'll see if George Kittle uh, makes it back to us. I mean, again, I'm not really going to be going that direction. I've already got Travis Kelsey, but more so just um, as an exercise to see uh, where they would have been selected. At running back right now, 
I don't really love any of these options. You know, Gibson, Mitchell, Sanders. I'd rather just wait for a Rashad Penny, probably. Um, maybe even an A.J. Dillon. Yes, I understand I already have Aaron Jones, but I do think A.J. Dillon has standalone value. Kareem Hunt. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just better off waiting, honestly. Justin Herbert just got selected. D.K. Metcalf. Okay. Uh, so we got to wait three more picks until our next selection. Ideally, you know, we can grab uh, Allen Robinson. And we'll see if that that's meant to be or not. Uh, if he isn't there, I might just go with the quarterback and, you know, um, get another positional advantage there. Um, because, I mean, we do have two wide receivers in Waddle and Mike Williams. But right now, my ideal scenario is that I get Allen Robinson in the seventh uh, sorry, in the what would be sixth round, and then Juju Smith-Schuster in the seventh. So Jerry Judy just went, Devin Singletary before that. Let's see what happens with the pick right uh, before us. Are we going to get sniped again? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. There's there's a decent chance, you know. I think we're getting to the point where it, an Allen Robinson selection makes a lot of sense, but no, it's Hunter Renfro instead. So we're going Allen Robinson here. I'm not really wasting any time. George Kittle just got selected. There goes Lamar Jackson. Okay, totally makes sense. I'm going to continue to wait on the quarterback position. I'm going to continue to load up on wide receivers. I really like Juju Smith-Schuster. Uh, I don't care if I have Kelsey and Juju Smith. I believe in both those guys this season. Uh, there are different positions, tight end, wide receiver. Um, so, you know, and Juju Smith-Schuster at this point is a depth piece for me. He's on my bench. So... I'm not really paying attention to the fact that they're both on the Chiefs uh, offense. And, you know, if anything, you know, the Chiefs offense is one of those offenses where you can invest multiple offensive players on in terms of fantasy drafting. Uh, we could have gone Kyler Murray here instead of Juju as well to, you know, get the positional advantage of quarterback. But I wanted to continue to load up on wide receivers. Just really, really like the value right now. And then, um, you know, in the eighth round, I'll be able to get a, I mean, I'll be able to get probably like a Wilson or a Burrow or a Stafford or a Carr. So feel very good about that. Whoa, Damian Pierce going at the 708. Uh, sure, he's projected to be the starting running back for the, you know, for the Texans. But you know, there, again, there's other guys I'd rather like. I don't know how A.J. Dillon is ranked 97th overall. I might just honestly go Dillon or Rashad Penny with him with my next two picks if both those guys are available going for upside at the running back position. Elijah Mitchell just went. Miles Sanders. So I anticipate some of these top running backs that are left over here per these rankings are going to start to fly off the board. I do really like Rashad Bateman. Let's see if he makes it back to us. Alan Lazard. Uh, there's a lot of names. DeAndre Hopkins still there. You know, I kind of alluded to it. Maybe we can target him uh, after the suspension. So we're going to, oh, there goes Rashad Bateman. So right now, again, we got three more picks. Tom Brady. I'm not going quarterback here. I'm going to continue to wait on quarterback even though Jalen Hurts is kind of tempting at this point in terms of upside. But yeah, I'm just going to go with, I'm going to go with what I said before. I only have two running backs, A.J. Dillon, Rashad Penny, Drake London just goes. First, I'm going to, I would go with A.J. Dillon. And then afterwards, we're going to figure out the rest. So Devonta Smith just went this, yeah, it's easy pick for me. I'm going A.J. Dillon. And then let's see what happens here. Tyler Lockett, Elijah Moore. Quarterback, again, Jalen Hurts is there. Okay, I really like Matthew Stafford. I really like Russell Wilson. I'm not going to force it. Lazard is a little bit tempting, but I want to load up on running backs. I'm going to go uh, based off upside. I'm going to go with Rashad Penny here. So now I'm starting to feel better about a running back position wide receiver. Um, Alan Lazard was definitely in contention, but... I wanted to put a little bit of a focal point on the running back position. You know, we've got uh, an alpha running back in McCaffrey. I mean, if the guy stays healthy for the majority of the season, he's a locked and loaded top five running back. Aaron Jones, I think he's going to have a very good year in PPR formats, uh, like top 10 type of season. So I feel good about that. Jalen Hurts was selected after our selection. That makes sense. Clyde Edwards, Julio, Kadarius Toney, Dallas Goddard, Damian Harris starting to pick up a little bit right now. Uh, let's see if there's any still like very good values left on the board. Um, I really like Cole Kmet. Zach Ertz ain't bad. Wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins, I believe, is still available. He is. Um, you know, I, I would say Hopkins is a luxury pick. Don't be selecting him way too early. 
Uh, make sure you have the core of your roster already, you know, you don't basically you don't want him to be your starting wide receiver or like your wide receiver two something like that. Uh, Kareem Hunt or Mondre Stevenson, they go off the board. So Dak Prescott, this is probably the time where we can select a quarterback. Again, I mentioned the quarterbacks that I'm going to be targeting. They're Wilson, they're Stafford, they're Derek Carr. So I think all those guys are very, very good options at wide receiver. Alan Lazard, yes, we've mentioned him. Zach Ertz goes. We're probably going to make just like these next two picks because it's this thing is kind of transitioned fast into some auto selections, things like that. I imagine we might start seeing, ooh, there goes Alan Lazard. I was going to say, I imagine we might start to see some defenses go off the board. Um, but after two more picks, it's our turn to make a selection. Again, I'll probably prioritize going DeAndre Hopkins first and then make a quarterback selection and then we'll kind of wrap it up that way and and grade this roster give you guys our thoughts on it there goes Brendan Cooks let's see if let's see if Hopkins makes it to us Uh, I'll be very very interested to hear to see if not it's not the end of the world I can go elsewhere I can go Cole Kmet as a you know depth piece uh, as a luxury pick something like that let's see what's left at running back as well Uh, Melvin Gordon, good value pick. Uh, Alexander Madison just went. That's fine. So I'm going to wide receiver, though. I'm going DeAndre Hopkins. So let's get that taken care of, and then let's draft a quarterback. (laughs) This person drafted two quarterbacks, uh, Russell Wilson and Joe Burrow. That's kind of funny. I'm going to Matthew Stafford here. So, yeah, uh, you know, we've got the core of our bench. We've got our starting roster taken care of. Let's break it down. Stafford, he's a guy... I've said it before, if the Rams aren't worried about his elbow, I'm not either. Uh, I think he can be a top six, top seven quarterback. Uh, I've got him paired with Allen Robinson. I feel very good about that stack. Our running backs, McCaffrey, Aaron Jones, good. And then we got A.J. Dillon and Rashad Penny in the next couple of rounds. So even if something happens to Aaron Jones, I've got A.J. Dillon. Rashad Penny, kind of a flyer. Uh, You know, here the main thing will be the health of Christian McCaffrey, kind of as it is every single season. But I do think he'll be... You know, projections wise, I like him. Uh, Wide receivers, we got Waddle, Mike Williams, Juju, Robinson, Hopkins. I like how we bounce back there. And then we have Travis Kelsey, number one tight end uh, in a 10 team league. I'm going to give this roster a B grade, but hey, let me know your thoughts, whether you agree, disagree, along with any other questions in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer them all. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe. Give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. And lastly, make sure to check out the 2022 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide, now available for purchase. All the details in the description. But in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.